It seems just when the nation has recovered from the most recent horrific crime of senseless violence and murder, another one follows. Is there a thread that runs between these crimes? Are they a manifestation of some particular philosophical or practical idea? I'm Julius Matona. This is what Catholics believe. With me today to discuss paganism is Father William Jenkins. Father Jenkins is a Roman Catholic priest who has maintained to hold fast to the traditions and celebrates the traditional Latin Mass exclusively. Father Jenkins, we've, uh, we've seen these horrible crimes which are just characterized by senseless killing, uh, uh, absolute ins insensitivity to the value of human life. Many times uh, there seems to be nothing more than uh, someone who simply has totally forgotten how to control himself. Other times there seems to be occult influences. Do you see any kind of a thread which ties these together? Are they just ram random uh, happenings or are they a manifestation of a deeper uh, sociological societal disease? I think they definitely have a connection. Uh, regardless of whether it's the disgruntled employee who goes into the workplace and starts killing as uh, managers and, uh, and fellow uh, former employees, or whether it's uh, someone who puts on a black trench coat and walks around uh, killing people in the name of Satan. I think they do have a common ground, and that is uh, the rise of, uh, of uh, or the resurgence of paganism. What is paganism? Uh, paganism is basically the uh, the deification of the individual. Um, the idea that the individual is supreme and uh, is the arbiter of his own reality. He's like the creator of his own universe. That sounds a little different from the definition. I, I would have thought of pagan as someone who worships the earth and uh, indulges to all excess of the, the body and the stomach. Well, yeah, but you know, even that is a manifestation of the deification of the self. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, you know, whether it be Satanism or Wicca or uh, what do you want to call it, existentialism, uh, solipsism, you know, which is the belief that only, only the individual, only I exist, everything else is just, uh, you know, uh, an extension of my, uh, of my thoughts, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, it all comes back to the same thing. It comes back to the self. Uh, even those who worship Satan worship Satan because of what he can give them, what he can do for them, the power that they want, you know. Uh, the same with Wicca. I mean, this involves getting the self in tune with the forces of nature, well, which is actually a, an indirect form of Satanism, because uh, as our Lord said in the Gospel, uh, the, Luther, Lucifer is the prince of this world. Not that this world was created for him to rule, but because of sin we have made him such, because we have placed ourselves under his dominion. And so he is the prince of this world. And so when we worship the, the forces of the world, uh, basically what we're doing is we're putting ourselves at his disposal. Um, the, um, and then beyond Wiki, you have the modern philosophies of existentialism in all the various forms of that, that belief that uh, tells you that, you know, basically you, you fash fashion your own reality. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, the extreme form, the atheistic form, uh, that Jean-Paul Sartre was so famous for. So you basically create yourself by using your will. Um, and it doesn't matter what you use your will for. You can use it for anything. But as long as it's your will doing what you want, then you're affirming yourself and you're creating your own humanity. What are the, the hallmarks or characteristics of a, of a pagan society? Uh, basically the adoration of self. We see this today in our own society. The uh, you know, with all of the, the self-realization, the, the self-help, self-actualization uh, books that focus so much on the self. A lot of the, the cult of the body and uh, the focus on my health and, uh, you know, with the, 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 the cult of the great god Jog, as Bishop Kelly says. Um, you know, the, the fitness centers, there's, there's a real uh, almost fixation with physical perfection. And um, there's also a counterpart form of so-called spirituality, which again is a matter of self-psychoanalysis um, and, uh, you know, realizing one's own emotional well-being and uh, satisfaction and so on. Um, 
even in the old days, I mean, if, if you go back to the ancient paganism, which was in some ways far less pernicious than the modern paganism, uh, you find the same deification of of man. With the body? The body. Oh, statues from yeah, the I Greeks. Mean, well, well, read. Read under, in the book of Maccabees in the Bible about how the... Uh, uh, the Greeks built a uh, sports stadium right next to the temple with the idea that that would become the new temple, right? the worship of body culture. There's nothing wrong with that I mean, in the sense that the body was created by God and, uh, you know, God created it to be useful and created it to be strong and created it to be graceful and so on. But uh, obviously then to put that in the place of God is, uh, you know, that's idolatry. And uh, we have, uh, in the ancient pagan world, a, a glorification of not only human nature, but the worst aspect of human nature. You look at the gods. Look at the gods they believed lived on Olympus. Um, whether it go by the, the, the Greek title or by the Latin title, it doesn't matter, right? Basically, they were the same characters. They were all superhuman sinners. I mean, they were, they were glorified for their arbitrary use of power. They were basically like, like, like the comic book characters on the a newsstand uh, or in these uh, kiosks they have at the, uh, at the airports today. You know, these comic book characters that could hurl lightning bolts and, uh, you know, metamorphosize into uh, goo on the ground and slip under doorways and all the rest, you know. They have these superhuman powers, and what did they use them for? If you read the stories of the old pagan gods, it was basically like, like watching a modern-day soap opera. You know, they were always stealing each other's wives, and uh, they were always fornicating and adulterating, uh, lying, cheating, stealing, and because this was superhuman, it was considered to be something admirable. Mm -hmm. They elevated it almost to an art form. Now, we're going through the same process today, but our, our new Olympus is Hollywood, or the equivalent of Hollywood today, and these actors and actresses basically are new pagan gods. And they and get away with the anything and people heroes. admire them and glorify them. And the sports heroes, right. too. Because and they even political it. figures now, too. Mm -hmm. they, they have these the, the tragic flaw of the Greeks, mm -hmm. who they're larger-than-life figures, and you know they can get away with things which everyone else can't. Yeah, if they can turn fornication, adultery, and lying into an art form, then mm -hmm. people would admire them for that. What about the culture of violence? We, uh, you know, we, we see this in the movies. We see this now with uh, the incredible success, which uh, which was never achieved in the past, of say the WWF or the WCW, where you know professional wrestling stages violence and mm -hmm. shows 400-pound men jumping off a, a turnbuckle onto someone's head six feet below, and miraculously this guy survives it and then throws him across the ring. And sometimes the, it, it became a little surreal, as in the case where the one wrestler was lowered by a cable from a 90-foot uh, ceiling. The cable snapped. He fell and tragically died. And they, they didn't stop the event. They kept no, going. Wrong, because it's all part of the, uh, and, the overall tenor of the film. And, uh, but what, what about this, as this people seem so... Uh, so drawn, this is so widespread, and then whenever one will say, well, that's why you're getting these horrible murders because of the desensitizing effect of this violence, oh, come on, no one's influenced by that, it's just fun. Well, certainly somebody is influenced by it, that's a fact. I mean, there is a common thread running through these murders, these uh, school killings, and that is that they're all into heavy metal or uh, acid rock, right? Uh, or the goths now. The goths, yeah. uh, Marilyn Manson features mm -hmm. prominently, mm -hmm. or uh, the more violent species of rap music. They all have that in common, you know. But there are certainly some people that are more susceptible to that. That doesn't mean that everybody who listens to this is going to go out and start killing people, as we know. But uh, the thing is, that uh, form of entertainment coupled with other things works together to create a kind of a disaster. You know, you don't find that explosive just, you know, occurring naturally in nature necessarily. You have to mix the various elements. And so it is with our society, we're mixing those elements more and more. Uh, liberalism, which basically tells people that they are, uh, they have no free will. They're basically the, uh, the products of society. And, uh, you know, they, they can't resist. They're not responsible for what they do. This attitude has been kneaded into our society for a long time, and it's, it's bearing some very tragic fruit now. 
the prevailing philosophy in our modern schools is uh, self-esteem. Uh, just, you know, you are, have to be you. Uh, no question of restraining yourself uh, for the sake of others. Uh, you know, everything, again, revolves around the self. And uh, it's, a, it's a philosophy of skepticism. And so the only reality is what I think it is or what I want it to be. Uh, life means nothing. We've had the culture of abortion going on here for a generation now. And uh, I think people instinctively realize that if you could reach into the womb and, and crush a child, crush its head, and draw out its pieces, or even with this um, partial birth abortion, so-called, where they deliver the child, uh, I mean, uh, legs, uh, torso, arms, right up to the neck, and then ram uh, scissors into the back of the child's head, right into the brain, and then suck its brains out and then crush its skull so they can draw the rest of the baby out of the, out of the prison. I mean, if this is going on and it's legal, what does this tell people? And the majority of the uh, American people, if they're not, I'm not in favor of it, they're tolerating it. Uh, well, what does this tell people? What does this tell the young generation? Uh, they see, uh, you know, violence all around them and their forms of entertainment, and they find it entertaining. So why not take it from the screen to the school, if it's really entertaining? If you're watching what Catholics believe, we're discussing... Uh, Father Jenkins, one, one thing which, is, uh, which has been striking is that uh, any time uh, some kind of a connection is made by this entertainment, which is extremely vile or gross or promotes violence and, and you know, killing people and the, the movies, uh, right away, people get very uncomfortable with that and say, oh, that's nonsense, come on. I mean, I listen to that, that people have got to be responsible for their actions. As if to deny that words, pictures, sounds can influence people. The whole advertising in industry is built on using pictures, mm. sounds, and words, and ideas to influence people. To persuade people. And I, I think the problem is, is that they see this as an inhibition or a constraint of their right mm. to say or do whatever they want mm. without, without inhibition and without any kind of pressure not to. Sure. Well, again, it gets back to the self, right? It's what we want, and so no one can stand in our way. There's a rejection of the Ten Commandments because the Ten Commandments dare say, thou oh, shalt not. That's one thing people don't want to hear. No wonder our Lord said that if they've hated me, they will hate you also. And if they've hated him, they'll hate others for the same reason, who dare say, this is wrong, you must not do that. And then if we go so far as to say there is a hell uh, waiting for those who do such things, uh, then that is really uh, uh, stepping on the toes of modern so-called civilization. What's striking to me is, too, the, the whole forgotten area of purity and the practice of purity uh, one turns on the radio one is shocked by what one hears on so-called talk radio same thing on television and there's also this total lack of sensitivity where on some of these shock shows people will come out and say these very private things and, and, oh, and they just promote shock sells and that's the bottom line mm -hmm. really shock sells and whatever sells Mm -hmm. uh, there's always there'll be somebody who will be willing to sell whatever any other other person will buy, whatever it, whatever it is. Um, so, you know, you know, this shouldn't surprise us. It's always been that way. It's Let alone shock, but the the, the that doesn't make it right when I say. But it's even been that way. even the proliferation, I mean, of divorce, say, far more widespread. The infidelity, marital infidelity, far more widespread. Uh, pornographical magazines, mm -hmm. things which you would not see except to some underground publications, and now you see in mass circulation journals and periodicals. Uh, the, the one statistic I read was something like 40% of births were to single mothers. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the implications this has for the family, where no one seems to stay together, and things are upside down. Well, there are those who do. Yeah, th heroically through the years mm -hmm. uh, stay together. Mm -hmm. We know that. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, uh, paganism always glorified uh, uh, sexual deviance and uh, impurity. It always glorified it. Every form of paganism, every pagan society in the history of the world has glorified uh, sexual deviancy, uh, sexual perversions. So it shouldn't surprise us to see the same thing happening today. 
Um, the idea that the sexual power exists uh, as a life-giving power, a gift from God, to enable us to bring new life into the world. As, a, as opposed to a form of recreation? As opposed yeah. to a form of satisfying one's own pleasure. But again, here you have, it gets back, gets back to the self, self-gratification. Everything is self-gratification. This is the, if, if uh, the New Age movement, in all of its various forms, had a s central dogma, this would be the dogma gratify yourself you are who are <laughs> okay <laughs> instead of uh, god's i am who am right you are and that's that's like the the, the name of the new god and uh and uh, satisfying yourself that's that's the uh that's the central dogma. what are the effects on people uh, what is the effect of impurity and and leading a, a vicious life in this respect on individuals does it change them in any way from before they engaged in such practices oh yeah it definitely does sure because then there's the not only the darkening of the intellect from sin uh and the uh, i mean feeding the the emotions and feeding the pride and when you stoke pride i mean you can make someone actually insane Everyone I know, and I've met a number of people who I think were certifiably insane, had the same problem. They were completely self-absorbed, completely turned in upon themselves. Uh, they were insane, I believe, because they were detached from reality. And I, I consider that to be insanity, when you are out of touch with reality. And, uh, you know, but I meet somebody who, who is completely a prisoner of his own thoughts and creates his own world. And everything around him has to fit into that some category of his own mind, his own world. Um, uh, you know, they're basically trying to create their own universe, be their own gods of their own imaginary world, and they're crazy. Uh, existentialism does that. I mean, the, the philosophy of existentialism says uh, that you have to, you know, disavow belief in the things around you because you can't trust you know, that these things around you are real, the only thing you can be sure of is your own thoughts. And so when you're left with that, you're out of touch with reality. Mm -hmm. Or you're, you're basically what they're saying is, real, for you, reality is only what you think. You said that the impurity what experienced. darkens the intellect. How, how does it darken the intellect? What are its uh, manifestations? Well, with original sin, uh, way back in the Garden of Eden, uh, Adam and Eve underwent a tremendous metamorphosis when they sinned and the book of Genesis relates what happened when their eyes were opened and they saw and they they saw something that they had never seen before something they'd never imagined they saw evil that's why it was called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil Adam and Eve never knew evil you know evil is an abscess in the world it's it's something that belongs there that's not there it's an absence of a perfection that should be there uh, it is not a natural evil for a stone not to be able to see, but it is a natural evil for a human being not to be able to see, because human beings are supposed to be able to see. You take away a perfection that's supposed to be there, and you call it's an evil. Well, that's true of the character of a person, too. If they're supposed to have the virtue of honesty, and they don't, then they lie. That's an evil. That's called a moral evil, as opposed to a natural or a evil. a physical evil. Or a physical evil. And uh, we find that Adam and Eve suddenly were in a world in which there was this moral evil because of their rebellion and their attempt to be gods, their own gods. And uh, what they saw in each other was, was quite startling to them after this sin because they saw a transformation come over, each saw a transformation come over the other. But then each could also see the eyes of the other one looking back at them and reflecting what the others saw in them and uh, it's no wonder that their first reaction was to hide and to hide from God which is not easy to do and so uh, it's not possible to do the uh, this mentality of, of uh, trying to be your own gods is uh, the mentality behind the New Age movement in fact uh, the very teaching that the, the world uh, instructor or the world teacher, Lord Maitreya, who was forecast by one of the ungod mothers of the New Age movement, uh, that this world teacher is going to come into the world very soon. And his mission? To teach mankind its own divinity, to teach men that they are God and how to live that 
that life of God. Um, this is a, an, a mockery of the teaching of Christ, that we... It's a parody. Oh, yeah. it's, it's a parody, yeah. It opposes it point by point. So we can say that this world teacher will probably be the Antichrist, oh, whom wow. they are forecasting in the near future. But uh, Alice Ann Bailey, Annie Besant, uh, the, 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 the women who were really behind this uh, New Age movement in the earlier days, uh, Helen Glavatsky and so on, um, all went off to Tibet, you know, and uh, the mountains looking for the gurus. We find that happening today. For example, the Dalai Lama was recently visiting the United States here, and he was conducting some kind of a, a, a ceremony down in, uh, in Indiana. And who do we find there? Well, among many others, thousands of others, we find Harrison Ford, uh, we find Stephen Seagal, I believe, or Seagal, and we find uh, uh, Gear. What's his name? Uh, Richard Gear. If I'm pronouncing the names correctly, I'm not much of a movie goer, but they were all down there to uh, take part in these ceremonies. Uh, a generation ago, if it was that long ago, we found uh, members of the Beatles following this uh, Oriental mysticism. Uh, we find uh, John Lennon uh, singing his song, Imagine, No God Above, No Hell Below, You Know, No Heaven. And uh, we're reaping the the this the fruit of this and it's a it's a very bad seed because it denies the existence of a supernatural god to whom we are answerable and by whom someday we will be judged you know it's uh, traditionally the church was always opposed to paganism and tried to you know rid people or, or educate people and about the evils of paganism and have them stop do pursuing these practices However, it seems that today this is no longer the case. And you mentioned the Dalai Lama. I know that there was a meeting of all religions called for in Assisi by John Paul II, and he used the Cathedral of San Pietro where he actually put a statue of Buddha on the tabernacle, and mm -hmm. this man is held to be divine by his yeah, they, followers. They burned incense before the statue of Buddha on the tabernacle in this Catholic church in Assisi. This scandalized a lot of Catholic people. Um, but, I mean, this is just one of countless things that have happened after Vatican II, and they were done with the approval of the popes. I mean, John Paul II personally allowed a Hindu priestess, and this was a public act, to anoint him in the forehead with the ashes of the dung of a cow. who was offered, uh, or somehow, in honor of the, the, the Hindu god of destruction, Shiva. Mm -hmm. Now this scandalizes the Catholic people throughout the world, <clears throat> but when the Catholic Church uh, ceases to oppose the message of paganism, which is pure naturalism, um, and which is so completely opposed to the teaching of Christ, which is supernatural, uh, that there is a God in heaven who created the world, there's a divine creator to whom we are all answerable, and who determines what reality is, not we ourselves. Uh, when the church herself, which is committed with, by, to this mission by Christ, fails to teach that mission, then of course paganism is going to grow back like, like weeds overtake a garden. Would you say this preoccupation with, with, with entertainment and recreation and, and physical pleasure and oh, even this, this, this with the, the incredible uh, uh, profusion of sports, I mean it's like a professional sport for just about everything. Uh, is this a manifestation of paganism? And if it's so, what's wrong with it? Well, there's an obsession with sports because it is, uh, well, again, worldly, for one thing, right? But uh, it, it pertains to the body. And of course, if you make your God uh, pleasure and, um, you know, the things that the body can afford, then naturally you're going to be turning this way to devote your, let's say, Sundays instead of worshiping God to uh, worshiping the NFL or uh, the NBA, or, or your, your characters there. If they are your epitome of perfection, and physical perfection is what you mean by perfection, not, not character, then of course, uh, yeah, you turn on the TV, that becomes your shrine, and you uh, worship there, and you devote your time to it. When I say worship, I don't mean, uh, you know, falling down and bowing to the television set. People worship in different ways. Uh, one way they worship is by sacrificing. They sacrifice their money. 
Uh, they give a great deal of time to these things. They talk about these things as though they were the, the most important things in life. Mm -hmm. And uh, even to the point of considering them uh, among the most important reasons to live. Mm -hmm. Uh, take away their television nowadays, and a lot of people would be lost. Uh, they wouldn't are, know what to do with that. What are your recommendations to parents of, of younger children who see the sea of impurity that they find themselves in? How do they keep their children, if they have a love of God, to, to keep from losing it? Well, they've got to keep everything in perspective. I mean, these things we're talking about are in themselves not evil things. The, the point is that they can get between the individual person and God we have a tendency to idolatry. We have a tendency to put other things, earthly things, in the place of God. When that happens, then that's evil. And so uh, parents especially have to raise their children to recognize the fact that there is a God, a true God. Uh, they have to teach their children the authority of God, and they have to teach their children the love of God. Parents have to be the first ones to teach their children about these two things, the authority of God and the love of God, by their own parental example. And the, so they have to have order in their own lives. If the parents are idolaters, worshiping worldly things, worshiping themselves, first of all, what they want, then they're going to be giving the children an example of idolatry, and they're going to be raising them as idolaters. <coughs> so they have, to, they have to teach them about Christ, the love of Christ crucified. They have to teach them about the fact that um, they uh, must believe in God, they must place their hope in God, and they must love God, and love God enough to be willing to obey Him in this life and to follow Christ, and to follow Christ with the cross. You've been watching what Catholics believe.